I believe it's Mr. Brody who's starting us off, isn't he? Or am I starting us off? We'll get Stu here. Stu? Yeah, oh, he might be muted, Mark. Sorry. There we there go. There we go, Stu. Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. great. Awesome. Hey, here we are. Hey, welcome to our Sunday evening uh, training call. And um, I just, uh, what the subject that we're going to be talking tonight about is, uh, boy, you guys are going to throw some uh, different screens up there. That's cool. I, I can do this. I won't be distracted. Anyway, our training subject for tonight is resolving concerns. <clears throat> and there are several components, uh, as well as some reference sites that I'll give you at the end. You know, to kick it off, let's just get started with one theme. And, uh, and we all go through the same challenges. That's really the common theme. Some of us learn a little faster than others, but, uh, and normally the speed of that knowledge is based on the number of exposures we make. So the bottom line is, is that the more activity or exposures we make, the faster we learn. I call this uh, plan, do, and review. When I first got into the business of network marketing, uh, I, I learned the whole strategy of plan, do, review. You, know, you make a plan, whether it be your goal, but getting started and making those exposures. So you make the plan, you do it, you execute it, and then you review it, and you make any corrections that you need to make. Um, as I go through this training, remember, we all have the same market timing uh, with the same company, uh, products, pricing, compensation plan, and we all have the same challenges and the same opportunity. Not everyone we contact will say yes. In most cases, it will take a series of steps or multiple exposures or follow-ups before a person gets to the yes. Um, oh, your connection is unstable, it says. <laughs> How fun. I got all these things popping up all over the place. Uh, only about 1% or 2% of all the people that you enroll would have said yes on the first exposure. So follow-up becomes the number two most critical component of your business and your eventual success. Um, what you, what, you know, the number one uh, most important component is exposures. You know, we all have to make exposures. If, if you answered that, that, that's the number one, then you got it right. So number one is exposures. Number two is follow-up which incorporates resolving these concerns. It took multiple exposures and more information and answers to a lot of questions and concerns before I said yes. How many exposures did it take you? You know, was it two or three or more? The timing in a prospect's uh, you know, life is another factor. So if the timing isn't right for them, maybe they're going through something at work or maybe it's a divorce or a kid or a marriage or whatever, and the timing might, be, might not be right and that's okay. It took me over two years to enroll a gentleman by the name of Steve Brown from Tennessee. He decided to get started once he had an amazing experience on our True Science product. product. And he's in his late 70s. I enrolled a now Pro 5 in Barrie, Ontario, Canada that took a year. She did not accept or return my phone calls or answer any of my emails. But I kept sending pieces of information and finally something clicked. Her circumstances changed. She saw something that caught her attention and she called me. Was it worth it? Was it worth the wait? Uh, absolutely. And that's Kathy Wooten and Sean Wooten and we're the best of friends today. In fact, uh, we visit them and they came out here and visit us in San Diego. I think one of the keys that I really want to emphasize is that we're not salespeople. You know, whenever you see a salesperson come, typically we run. We don't want anything to do with it. We might be polite, but we'll decline. You know, like I, I like to use the, the uh, example of a shopping center and somebody comes up to you while you're shopping and they say, can I help you? And most of us will say, no, thank you. I don't need any help. Or if I do need help, I'll let you know. We don't want to come off as salespeople. We are in the information uh, and, uh, and, and referral business. So what we want to do is we want to educate people and provide them with information, mostly from third parties. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit more detail, but uh, I wanna mention a couple other examples, just so you know that we're all the same, we all have the same issues and the same challenges. It took Maria several contacts before Dr. Gordon even watched the ABC video. Then he conducted his own due diligence and decided to get started. 
Um, you know, one, one glaring example that I got to tell you about is a real great friend of mine that I've known for maybe 25, 26, 27 years is Kerry Dickey. And when we first got started, I, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. In fact, I wasn't even involved in the opportunity. I just wanted to get her some information because I knew what her uh, feeling was about health. I just wanted to get the information from her. So I sent her a copy of the ABC video. Am I still on? I see Mark sitting there. You're still on, Stu. Yep, okay, you're great. Awesome, awesome, thanks. And so I sent her the video and she wouldn't even look at it. And so finally what I did is I sent it to Sharice Matthews and uh, Sharice Matthews was all over it. She saw the gravity. She saw how big this thing could be. And what I did is I just sent uh, Carrie Dickey an email back and I said, hey, Carrie, Sharice looked at this and she's out of her mind on it. She loves it. And that got Carrie to look at the video and ended up, you know, she got involved. Was it worth it? Was it worth the time? Was it worth the extra effort? And I would, you know, submit to you. Absolutely. Sharice Matthews alone does over a million dollars a month in business. That's huge. So that's why they say the fortune is in the follow-up. You, you, you don't want to be overbearing on anybody. I like to ask people and I like to be patient about whether they like to learn by reading. You know, that might be a study. Uh, I like to ask them if they like to watch something that could be a video or if they want to read something. And again, that could be something that I either come up with or I find in a study. So you know, keep all that in mind. And, you know, what I, again, what I would love for all of you to embrace is that this really isn't a pure sales type business. I mean, yeah, or, or a convincing business. Yes, you're going to be talking to people and sales people talk to people, but it's more of the relationship type business. So again, don't, don't convince people. Use third party. And again, I give you some examples. I, I've used YouTube videos. I've used science webinars. Uh, live phone calls or pre-recorded calls, training calls like this. You know, we have so many tools at our disposal we use to educate, inform, and follow up. Uh, I like to ask people again, you know, how do you like to learn or what do you like to look at? Sometimes you'll meet people who, who don't, you know, either don't, don't want to know what you have or they aren't interested once they look at it, and that's okay. You know, I like to ask them, you know, look, I don't, or tell them, I don't, I don't want to waste your time. And in some cases, I just ask them, do you mind if I stay in touch with you and just let you know my progress or how I'm doing? Um, so, you know, that, that's another thing. You might even play the game, you know, who do you know? You know, I, I like to tell people because I like to really put it out there. And I like to ask people, who do you know that like to make one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the next 12 to 18 months? Do you know anybody like that with the breakthrough technology? And really what is I'm trying to do is just get them to really be a little bit more open-minded and take a look at what we have. I'd also say that, uh, you know, to somebody that, that I, I'm friends with is, you know, I don't want to jeopardize our friendship, so don't worry about it. I value your fr friendship more than convincing you that you need to change your life or that you should look at this. Um, you know, I don't intend it to be that way, but what it turns out to be is a subtle takeaway. And some people change their posture and they'll decide to look at what you have. Another good approach I've used and it's sort of disarming is I have something, you know, or I'm on to something, but it may or may not be for you. Those kind of things kind of disarm people and kind of leave them a little bit open. You know, regardless, make exposures without being attached to the outcome. You know, otherwise you might find yourself and get set up, you know, for a little bit of disappointment. Normally you'll find out whether your prospect is open even to looking at something during the invite. And you can go to the blueprint and check out, you know, the, the invite. You know, you've got form, family, occupation, recreation, money. And typically, you'll have an in with that. And also, the feel, felt, found method. I don't want to get into all the specifics because this isn't really the forum for that. Again, I'm going to give you some, uh, some uh, uh, places that you can go, some reference material where you can go and actually get, you know, scripts that you can use if that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, during the invite, you might ask people, you know, if they're happy in what they're doing. You know, would they like to have more time or more money? And if they did, what would they do with it? What would they do with the extra time? What would they do with the extra money? <clears throat> and that's where form comes in. Uh, you know, do you like skiing? You know, do you ski much? You know, do you spend much time with your family? Would you like to spend more time? Do you make all the money you want? So the last point and probably the most important point regarding resolving concerns is it's really, really, it gets down to all about your posture. Uh, objections are, are nothing more than a test of your commitment and your belief and your passion. <clears throat> a prospect will test you 
to determine whether or not they want to follow you. If they like what they see, but you're not the leader that they want, you know, they may look elsewhere. So you've got to have really, really strong posture. And that's typically what happens when you become a pro seven, eight, nine, or 10 or, or higher is that you're making the kind of money where you just have a bulletproof vest on. But when you first start out, it's a little difficult, but people want to follow leaders. You must have this galvanized belief. And if you don't have it, you got to find it. You got to figure it out some way. Um, I found it, I found out, uh, you know, I, I got my posture through just enrolling some preferred customers, enrolling a few distributors, and them coming back with all these amazing, uh, <coughs> you know, stories and what they were going through, making money or, or having an incredible experience on the product. When it comes to commitment, one of my mentors used to say, you'll find me at the top of the mountain or dead on the side of the road. <coughs> and that really epitomizes, excuse me one second, had some pepperoni pizza, the kids are over here, and man, it's horrible. Shouldn't have pizza and you shouldn't have pepperoni. Yeah. So when someone says, uh, you know, are you going to the top? You don't even want to hesitate. You know, get your commitment in order. Get your belief in order. If you hesitate, they're going to smell it and they're going to go somewhere else and they're not going to get started with you. Uh, what a prospect is trying to decide, and if you put yourself in that position when you were a prospect or when you got started, is what's in it for me? Can I do this? Do I want to take the time? And is this worth my time? Um, if they're asking questions about how much money can be made, you don't have to worry about how much money you're making. Just go to the company income disclosure statement and just ask them, you know, what kind of money would be of interest to you? What do you see here that would really get you excited? And then ask them if they could accomplish the same thing by doing what they're doing currently. And I, I like to say, you know, think about the last five years of your life. You know, are you doing and are you making what you, what you put out to make? Uh, what does the next five years look like? I want to get people thinking about that. Again, my belief came as a result of using the product. You want to be a product of the product, attending events, <clears throat> and we've got a huge event coming up, being on conference calls like this to learn about the company and the science, enrolling PCs and distributors, and by using the product myself and hearing about people's uh, experience on the product. The last two points are the blueprint can be found in your back office library by hoovering or hovering your mouse over communication and then going down to the library and clicking there and going down and finding the proven plan now the, uh, or the uh, blueprint. The blueprint is the written form of the proven plan which was developed and authored by Mark Shinsato and Seth Mulder. There's a website and you can go through each and every bit of training, an audio series that both Seth and, and Mark put together called theprovenplan.com, theprovenplan.com. And they do a live call every Saturday morning. They've been doing it for about eight, maybe nine years. Uh, uh, you'll find it on bigbluecalendar.com every Saturday. <clears throat> There's also a complete training in your back office that I want to mention. It's called the New Distributor Training, and it's in English and Spanish, and it's really, really awesome. So if you're familiar with LV Move, whenever you enroll somebody and you put them in the LV Move, um, uh, you know, in, in the system, they'll be hit or, or they'll be given these, these training components. And it's the building blocks of training. And you can actually go there and watch the videos in your back office. So it's a complete training program. I'm watching Mark moving around and I'm kind of losing track of where I'm at, but it's cool. I'm almost done. Thank goodness. I'm going to turn it over to Mark and let him, him run. Thank goodness. I can't see everybody else. I can only see Mark's pretty face and that's, that's a good thing. Um, so again, go to the training tab, right? Go to the training tab in your back office and just hover your mouse over it and just click. And there's only one training component there. It's Spanish or it's English and it's really, really awesome. And it's all videos. So these are just some ideas for you. In closing, you know, I'll just say that, you know, this is the age of, of individual, individualism and entrepreneurship. I mean, you've got Airbnb, you've got Uber, Lyft, eBay, Amazon. Uh, and I remember years ago that I was uh, actually, you know, I, I, I had a, an Amazon account and you could give somebody, uh, uh, you, you know, you could give somebody a link and they could buy stuff and you'd get like a referral fee, which was really cool. Network marketing, as stated by Paul Zane Pilzer in his book, The Next Trillion, is the big thing today. That and health 
and uh, you know, and uh, network marketing is where it's at. So uh, I'd say get that book and read it. But again, go through your back office, check that out. The definition of commitment is to do what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my good buddy and huge uh, elite pro nine in our business, uh, Dr. Mark Gordon. He's going to be talking to you about Nerf 2, and I'm glad my part is over. Thanks, Mark. Take it away. Thank you, Stu. I'm going to do a screen share here so that I can bring up some slides if that's okay. Let me know that everybody can see these okay when I pull them up here. Hold on. Okay. Is everybody seeing that? Yep, we're yep. good. All right, perfect. So what I want to do in 15 minutes is an hour-long science presentation. So I'm going to go super fast here. And if you don't get it all, it's okay because Stu's recording this. You can go back and watch it. So first off, what we're looking to do with Protanum Nerf 2 is to reduce oxidative stress. So what is oxidative stress? Oxidative stress is the disturbance in the balance between the production of reactive oxygen species of free radicals and antioxidant defense systems, okay? So the things that are in red here or orange, because I'm colorblind, I, I can't tell what color those are, those are the bad things. Those are the things that cause damage to your cells. The superoxide anion, the, hydrox the hydrogen peroxide, the hydroxyl radical, and the peroxynitrite. Those are the things that build up uh, when you don't have a good antioxidant defense system and they cause damage to your cells, they lead to cellular aging, um, disease, and ultimately death. And so as you can see on the top, the things that catalyze the reaction to the harmless things, the water and the oxygen, are SOD, catalase, and glutathione. So if you're deficient in those things, you're going to have a buildup of those toxic free radicals there, the superoxide anion, the hyd hydrogen peroxide, hydroxy radical, and the peroxynitrite. You don't want that. You want the reaction to go over to water and oxygen, and you need to have the SOD catalase and glutathione to catalyze those reactions. So we live in a very toxic environment. When we are young, we have a very good ability to fight the free radicals because our own cells produce antioxidant enzymes. These things that actually will neutralize those free radicals, the SOD, the catalase, the glutathione. So if we go back, you can see where those work. And when you have high quantities of those, you don't get the buildup of those toxic uh, free radicals that cause the damage. But as we age, we produce less and less of those protective enzymes. And so the result is we have more of a buildup of those free radicals that start damaging our cells. Now, in addition to that, we live in a very toxic environment, one in which we have lots and lots of other things that increase free radical production, things like smoking, too much alcohol, pesticides that are sprayed on the foods that we eat, inflammation, poor diet, pollution, drugs, radiation. That was a big problem for me because I worked in a cath lab every day of my cardiology practice, standing two feet away from an x-ray tube. Stress, trauma, injury, um, infections, too much and not enough exercise, all of those things increase free radical production, oxidative stress, leading to cellular aging, disease, and death. And if you look at the different organ systems, oxidative stress affects every single one of them. So all of the diseases that you hear about that people get as they get older are linked back directly to oxidative stress. So in the heart, for example, heart attacks, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, endothelial dysfunction, the brain is very susceptible to oxidative stress causing Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, and all sorts of other things. But everything that you don't want to get when you get older is linked back to oxidative stress. And so Mr. Sean Poe, who's on the call, when he does his science presentations, he says oxidative stress is bad. Reducing oxidative stress is good. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here with Pertanum. But let's go back historically a little bit and talk about what we used to think in the past. We used to think it was a good idea to take antioxidants in the form of vitamin E, vitamin C, and beta carotene, and so forth. And so those antioxidants would neutralize free radicals in a one-to-one -one relationship. So one antioxidant molecule neutralizes one free radical, and then the process is over. But what we've come to learn is that's a bad technique or a bad way to try to get rid of free radicals. And the reason why is because there's all of these studies out there now that show that taking high doses of things like vitamin E, vitamin C, 
beta carotene not only don't reduce your risk of cancer and heart disease, but in certain cases may actually increase your risk of cancer. And so these are some of the studies that actually showed that. And so what we've come to realize is that it's better to get our bodies to make it our own antioxidants. And whoever is drawing on my slide, please stop. I don't know who that is. My guess is Kevin Messerschmidt if he's on the, on the uh, webinar. Um, but we've come to realize that these direct antioxidants, these things that we take in from the outside, the vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, and so forth, are not as effective at the, as the indirect antioxidants, those antioxidants that our cells actually make, the SOD, the catalase, the glutathione, and all of those other protective enzymes. So thus enters NERF2. NERF2 is a messenger protein that activates genes and it's responsible for redox balancing and it's a master regulator. So here's how the NERF2 pathway works. So when something acts on a cell, that is a NERF2 activator, it acts on this one protein called KEEP1. KEEP1 is a holding protein, and what that does is it binds NERF2, and it holds it in the cytoplasm of the cell attached to the inside of the cell membrane by this protein called actin. And so when the NERF2 activator acts on that cell, what happens is the NERF2 gets released from KEEP1, it then goes into the nucleus that attaches to a segment of DNA called the antioxidant response element, the ARE, and then it affects gene expression downstream on that strand of DNA. So it turns up the expression of the good stuff and it turns down the expression of the bad stuff. And so what it does essentially is it increases the production of these antioxidant enzymes, you know, catalase, glutathione, superoxide dismutase, but hundreds of others as well. There's lots and lots of other functions of NERF2 that we'll touch on in this talk because we only have limited time. But it also turns down through another messenger called NF-kappa B, it turns down the bad stuff. It turns down the pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic proteins. So you get the best of both worlds, more of the good, less of the bad. And we now have a clinical study with Portantinum, the first study that showed a 40% reduction in oxidative stress after 30 days uh, on average. And there's no other product on the market that can do that. So one of the interesting things about NERF2 is there's different places where you can actually activate the pathway. So for example, if we go back to this slide, you can increase the release of NERF2 from KEEP1. You can increase the entrance of NERF2 from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. You can increase the attachment of NERF2 to the antioxidant response element and you can reduce the degradation or the breakdown of the NERF2 protein. So all of those things would in essence do the same thing, increase the activity of NERF2. And so if we look at this slide, look at, at all the different pathways through which you can activate NERF2, that's very likely why protanum has such a potent effect at activating NERF2. You know, as you guys all know, there's five ingredients, green tea, turmeric, milk, thistle, ashwagandha, and bacopa and they all work synergistically to improve or enhance the NERF2 activity. And when I spoke to Dr. McCord about this, he told me it's probably because each one of those things are individually activating NERF2 at a different point in that pathway. And so the sum total of that is much greater than the sum of the parts, and that's the synergistic effect. <clears throat> Excuse me, the other thing that's important about NERF2 is to understand that physiologically, NERF2 is released in a pulsatile fashion. It's not turned on all the time. It's not turned off all the time. Both of those situations are bad, and you do not want that to happen. You want it to be released in a pulsatile fashion because that's what's physiologic. So a couple of times a day, having NERF2 turned on is a good thing. Having it turned on all the time is a bad thing. Now, if we go back and we look at the publications that have uh, happened on NERF2 in PubMed, you can see that, you know, when it was first discovered in the mid 90s, there were hardly any studies, but now by the end of 2014, there have been over 5,000 published peer reviewed studies on NERF2. So yes, it is a big, big deal. And there's more and more people that are getting on board with this whole NERF2 technology and recognizing that this is the wave of the future. I'm gonna skip through a lot of these slides because these are the ones that I do for my in-depth science talk and we just don't have time to cover them all today. This is a list of some of the companies and universities that currently have synthetic NERF2 activating compounds that are, they're studying. 
uh, in various diseases, everything associated with oxidative stress. So there's a big push out there in the pharmaceutical world to get the next NERF2 activator drug out there. But when you look at the comparisons between protandum and the synthetic NERF2 activators that are, have been studied so far, protandum is actually more potent as a NERF2 activator than even the synthetic stuff, which is unusual, but it has to do with the fact that we have that synergistic effect of the five ingredients together. Now, because protanum is a supplement and not a drug, we can't make any comments that it cures, treats, or prevents anything. But if you look at the studies that have been done on protanum, and there have now been 23 published peer-reviewed studies, the last one came out last week, there's not another supplement on the market that I'm aware of that has that kind of scientific validation like what we have. So here's what's in protanum, bacopa, silymarin, which is milk, milk thistle, EGCG, which is green tea, uh, with any, uh, which is um, the bacopa and curcumin, which is the turmeric. Here's what's important. If you look at the individual ingredients, they do very, very little by themselves to activate this NERF2 pathway. But when you put the five together, there was an 18-fold increase or 1,800% increase in the activation of these antioxidant genes. And that's that synergistic effect that we've been talking about. And that's what's so important. This was the first study that was done on protanum that showed the 40% reduction in oxidative stress in 30 days. It showed that superoxide dismutase increased 34%, catalase increased 54%. There's unpublished data to show that glutathione increases 300%. But the, the bottom line is there was a 40% reduction across the board in oxidative stress regardless of your age, and that was highly statistically significant. And that's what led to the patents on protanum. So we're going to whip through some of these. So this is an article that came out two years ago. This is a great article to uh, send people with scientific backgrounds to. It's a nice review of NERF2 and all of the diseases that have been studied with regard to NERF2. And the basic theme of the research was that just about every disease that they looked at improved when they activated NERF2. And so there's lots of different things that they looked at that can activate NERF2. This is a partial list of some of those things. Um, other healthcare factors that can increase uh, NERF2 activity include moderate exercise, certain types of diets, and so forth. Now, when looking at the studies that they did, and I don't know who is drawing on my slides, and I don't know how to stop that. If hey, anybody, Mark, if you yes. go up to the very top, hover over the top in the annotations, you can clear it all. Oh, okay. Hit the view op options and then annotate. The eraser. Uh, just press clear. Clear. Okay. Hopefully it'll work. There we go. Yay! Perfect. Thank you. All right. All right. So if you look at the different things that have been studied with regard to nerve two, what has been found to be helpful are things diseases that have been improved by activating nerve two, things like cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, lung disease, liver disease, cancer prevention diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and so forth. And now I can't get out of this page and I lost my cursor, Sean. What am I gonna do here? Uh, click, click back on your slides. Click back on my slides, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really lost here, dude. All right, shoot. Uh, exit out of the full screen and then go back in. I'm trying to, but I can't. It's, I'm hitting the escape and it's not doing anything. There okay. we go. Can you clear me out or no? I have to clear myself out. Um, let's see here. Okay. There we go. All right, now I'm cleared out. Now I'll go back in. All right, so screen share. Here we go. So if you guys are drawing on the screen, please do not. <laughs> Don't draw on my screen, dudes. That stresses me out. Okay, so um, lots of different diseases that have been helped. Sepsis, autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, HIV, AIDS, lots of neurological conditions, including epilepsy, Lou Gehrig's disease, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease. Over 500 genes are activated or turned on with NERF2 
others, the bad ones are turned down through that MF kappa B that I talked about. Lots of other proteins, you know, we talk about SOD catalase and glutathione, but there's hundreds of other proteins that are beneficial that are turned down with NERF too. Uh, I'm just going to whip through these because I want to get to a couple of things at the end. Detoxification is a big thing. Glutathione has increased 300% with pertanum. Two phases of detoxification. If phase one works and phase two doesn't, you're going to be very sick. You got to turn on that phase two and you do so by increasing glutathione production, which NERF2 activation does. Lots of anti-inflammatory effects of uh, NERF2, antifibrotic effects as well. Cellular integrity. Two of the studies on pertanum had to do with this P53 tumor suppressor transcription factor. Uh, look at the studies from Louisiana State University on melanoma skin cancer, and you can see what those showed, but they were very beneficial. Longevity. Oregon State University did lots of studies on longevity, and basically what they found is that those animals that had the highest levels of nerf 2 lived the longest and had the least amount of disease as they aged. So it's important for longevity. Neurodegeneration, these are some of the diseases where NERF2 activation has been found to be beneficial. So it led to a lot of uh, editorial articles in the medical literature about, you know, is this NERF2 thing a cellular protection pathway that we need to be paying attention to? And the answer to that is yes. It's been found to be beneficial in both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes um, the Michael J. Fox Foundation is doing a study on NERF2 activation for treatment of Parkinson's disease. Um, Pertanum has been looked at with regard to the genes associated with Alzheimer's disease, and there's actually 66 genes associated with Alzheimer's. And what they found is that Pertanum had a positive effect on 43 or 65% of the 66 genes that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Now we can't say a secure treatment or prevention for Alzheimer's, but it's interesting that it has a positive effect on 65% of the genes associated with Alzheimer's. Multiple sclerosis, dimethylfumarate or uh, tecfidera has been found to be beneficial for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. It is a NERF2 activator. This was a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine showing how it reduced re recurrence rates of uh, MS by 50%. Another confirming study, a 44% reduction. So lots of studies on the effect of NERF2 in the brain. Now, this is a very important study. Let me go back here. This was a comparison of pertanum to bardoxolone in box B. Um, dimethylfumarate in box C, which is tecfidera, and sulforaphane, which is the active ingredient in broccoli, which is in box D. Two important things to note from this. One is pertanum was twice as potent as the synthetic drugs at activating NERF2, and it was six to seven times as potent as sulforaphane, which is often touted as the way to activate NERF2 in the kind of natural treatment world because it comes from broccoli but pertanum is actually six to seven times more potent. The other thing to notice is that there's a kind of a bell-shaped effect with each one of these ingredients, or each one of these NERF2 activators. So you don't get more effect by going to a higher dose. In fact, you get less of an effect. So there's a sweet spot in the dosing of each of these products. And going to a higher dose won't get you to the point won't get you to the same level of NERF2 activation that pertanum has. So you might think the Tech Federa people maybe just underdosed, well, that's not the case. Going to higher doses, they're never going to get to the same NERF2 activation level as per tandem. This was a study in, from uh, the Netherlands from an international MS society meeting. And this is their conclusions. Our findings indicate that several NERF2 activators are able to significantly increase antioxidant enzyme production. Interestingly, pertanum, a dietary supplement consisting of herbal ingredients, was the most potent inducer and therefore maybe the most suited as a therapeutic strategy. Now, this study just came out last September, and this was, uh, as you can see from the authors on this, Dr. McCord and Dr. Jack Van Horsen, who works for Biogenetic, they teamed up on this. They didn't look at, at uh, Tecfidera, they looked at a similar compound called monomethylfumarate instead of dimethylfumarate, but they found some very interesting results. So the tallest bars there are pertandum, and the results are very good. So if you look at the other things that they looked at, sulforaphane, monomethylfumarate, and then the controls, protanum was significantly better in antioxidant protein expression. It increased glutathione levels significantly more. 
It promoted oligodendrocyte survival, which is a type of nerve cell better than anything else. And so their conclusions were that protanum is probably the best suited at protecting those nerve cells. But again, this is a supplement. We can't make any health claims. Uh, this was a study from the National Institute on Aging, looking at nutritional supplements and what effect they might have on extending lifespan. So here, here are the agents that they found that extended lifespan. 17-alpha estradiol. So think about that. If you're male, do you really want to take estrogen? I don't. Metformin and rapamycin, which is, which is a diabetes drug and an immunosuppressive drug. I'm not going to take those every day. Um, Precos, which is another diabetes drug. I'm not going to take that because I don't have diabetes. And protanum. Protanum was the only supplement that was found to lengthen lifespan. And they looked at fish oil, resveratrol, curcumin, green tea, and so forth. But of all of the supplements, protanum was the only one that they found that extended lifespan. It wasn't, it wasn't huge, but it was statistically significant. We talked about neurodegenerative uh, diseases and so forth. Lots of studies going on in those. Altitude sickness, protanum has been found to be beneficial through that nerve to activation. Um, and so just to kind of summarize that Washington State article, these are the, the diseases in which it was found that activating NERF2 may be helpful. Cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative diseases, cancer prevention, chronic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, etc., liver disease, lung disease, autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, HIV, AIDS, MS, epilepsy. That's a pretty long list. Cardiovascular disease, lots of studies going on in cardiovascular disease. This is looking at atherosclerosis and the genes associated with atherosclerosis. Protanum had a positive effect on 16 of the 19 genes associated with atherosclerosis. Riata Pharmaceuticals has a drug called Bardoxlone. It is a nerve 2 activator. They're studying pulmonary hypertension. Interestingly, protanum actually beat them to the punch because protanum has studies on pulmonary hypertension. And this particular study in circulation, which is the Journal of the American Heart Association, which was my epiphany moment, was the one that showed that despite the fact that they created pulmonary hypertension in these animals, they didn't develop right heart failure, which would otherwise have been expected. So protanum preserved the function of the right heart when it should have started to dilate and fail, and it didn't do that. And they talk about the mechanisms through which that may happen. But because of time, we're not going to go through all of that. But I would encourage you guys, if you're able to, to get on one of my uh, in-depth science seminars when I can go through this in much, much more detail. Here was a great study, looked at how T-bars is the best marker for uh, future cardiovascular events. It's better than looking at CRP. It's better than looking at LDL or total cholesterol or any other parameter. They found that the T-bar test was a better predictor of future cardiovascular events. So why aren't we looking at that? I don't know. We should be. Um, cancer prevention, um, the genes associated with colon cancer, 25 of the 28 genes are turned in the opposite direction with protandum. Again, this is not a treatment, cure, or prevention for any type of disease. This was the skin cancer study from uh, Louisiana State University, a very positive effect. They actually did two studies. The Mayo Clinic, a gentleman from there did a study on ovarian cancer and showed that protandum um, shows promising effects in, in potentially in ovarian cancer. He's doing some more studies right now looking at that. Um, from the University of uh, Toronto or Montreal, I can't remember, showed that protanum had a protective effect on the degradation of cartilage in osteoarthritis. So, you know, for people to say that this protanum is snake oil and doesn't do anything, it just drives me bananas because we have now 23 peer-reviewed scientific studies, much to the contrary of the naysayers. So I would encourage you guys, if you haven't had a chance to look at all the scientific studies that are available on protanum and are available on NERF2, to go and look at that. And I'll leave you with this. This was from an uh, instructor in my anti-aging fellowship. And this gentleman was the chief science officer of a company that sells a sulforaphane nerf to activator product. Remember I told you sulforaphane is one sixth to one seventh as potent as pertandem. He stated this, nerf 2 is a revolution in science and is the most important anti-aging pathway in the, in the human body. If you understand what NERF2 is and how potent it is and the big effect that it has 
on disease prevention, longevity, and so forth, why on earth is not everybody jumping on board and wanting to get involved with this? So I'm going to leave it with that, Stu. Um, let me just add with, end with this one statement from the Washington State article. Nerf 2 may well become the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary preventive breakthrough in the history of medicine. Handing it back over to you, Stu. Thank you so much. Stu, are you there? He is, he is. I'm muted. You're good now. All right. Hey, that was absolutely phenomenal. Look at I took off my hat, I took off my shirt. I'm I'm a different guy. Uh, <laughs> look, at, look at how fast you can change. Quick change artist. Hey, Mark, that was absolutely awesome. Incredible. It was a little fast for my brain, but very, very, very powerful. So thank you so much. And Sean Michelle, thank you guys so much for uh, taking control. Uh, man, I saw Mark's going on Mark's screen. I felt so sorry for him because I was all all messed up. So anyway, you guys say hey, just just go out and create the exposures and you'll learn by doing. That's really it. It's on the job experience. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week, right? Monday morning, tomorrow morning, we have a, our team call. Tomorrow night, we have a, uh, an incredible doctor's call. I'll get that information out to you. So uh, we'll see you later. I'm signing off. Take care of you guys. Good night, Bye. Good night everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Mark. Thanks, Stu.